Good morning, viewers. Myself, Dr. Vijayapatarya. For today's channel-based counseling for MBA program, today we will be referring to another episode for strategic management, that is MMPC 12. In this, we will be referring some new business environment related aspect. Earlier, we discussed some global business environment as well as the external business environment. So the last unit of block two, that is environment analysis, will refer the last unit, that is unit number six, internal business environment, and some of the important analysis factors over there. The point of discussion in this unit will cover aspects related to the basic concept, then some strategies related to resource-based view, that is RBV, then different types of resources under RBV strategy will also be discussed today. Then critical success factors 
and the key sources to CSF will be discussed in today's session. Then the Potter's value chain framework will be discussed in today's session, which will give some sort of guiding points for evaluating primary activities under BCF. Then we will also refer the important aspect of referring to the internal environment of the firm from the perspective of the strength and the weaknesses. For that, we will be referring the SWOT analysis with some good example. The SWOT analysis will be discussed. After that, we will try to refer the concept of internal factor evolution, IFE metrics, along with some example to it. But before we move ahead, we need to understand the concept of internal environment analysis, why this is important for an organization. Until unless the organization, a firm, is not aware in terms of its own understanding of its own strength, weaknesses, maybe the correlation or the cohesiveness with other departments, uh, functional divisions, then Till that time, it won't be able to understand its own capabilities and capacities to function. Therefore, internal environment analysis help an organization in terms of understanding the organizational capability, which influence ultimately the evolution of successful strategies, formulation, and its implementation. Therefore, now we need to understand the resource-based view of strategy. For that, if we refer the basic resources, maybe it's the tangible resources or intangible resources point of view, then a resource is something which an organization owns, is accessible or can be developed to formulate and execute strategies for improving effectiveness and efficiency. Therefore, when we refer the resources, it can be tangible assets, intangible assets, core competencies, capabilities, organizational processes, technical know-how, and the knowledge. And therefore, uh, when looking at the strategic development from a different perspective, maybe stretching and exploiting the organizational capability to create opportunities, it again becomes important for the firm to understand their capabilities. Therefore, the about two perspectives together make a concept of a resource-based view, that is RBV of the strategy. It is centered on the concept of resources as the key to superior organizational performances. The managers are required to make strategy strategic decisions based on the resources and capabilities. Model adopts the internal perception to explain how an organization's unique internal resources and capabilities serve as a basis for earning above average returns and thereby gaining competitive advantage over their rivals. Apart from that, when we try to refer the types of resources under the resource-based view of strategy, then in that case, there are three major types of such resources. Number one, assets. Number two, capabilities. And three, competencies. Here, the assets are the factors of production used by organizations in providing its customers with valuable goods and services. Very commonly, they are tangible, but at the same time, intangible assets are also plays important role. Here, the second aspect was capabilities in types of the resources. It means a kind of a skill set that add value to the products. Number three, competencies, which is a kind of ability to perform or distinctive competencies. Apart from that, the resource-based view 
that is RBB model also helps in terms of indicating that competitive advantage will be achieved by ensuring that resources are developed as per VRIO. Well, VRIO framework stands for the valuable, rare, costly to imitate and organize. And this is used to develop strategic response to external environment demands. Here in this diagram, you can see that resource-based view relies on resources which are both tangible and intangible assets and that must be heterogeneous and immobilized and have VRIO attributes to become VRIO resources. Ultimately, the aim is to provide competitive advantage to the firm. We also need to understand in terms of internal environment analysis, the concept of critical success factor because it's a kind of contribute or kind of contribution to organization's success, particularly in a competitive environment where the organization need is in terms of improving on, uh, in, in terms of, uh, since poor results may lead to declining performance. Multiple such factors of critical success factors are capable technical personnel, effective risk management, effective communication, effective planning, capable managers, effective KPIs, effective quality control, effective cost estimating, effective process and system, effective milestone tracking, and effective change management. Now, we also need to understand the key sources or the major sources of critical success factor. There are majorly two major such sources. Initially, it is industry characteristics as critical success factors, where the industry specific critical success factors are factors which are critical for the performance of an industry. If we take some example of hospitality industry, then excellent and customized service, wide presence and an excellent booking and reservation system is critical. While if we take an example of airline industry, then fuel efficiency, load factors and an excellent reservation system are critical. If we refer another major source of critical success factor, then competitive position as the critical success factor for an organization may also be determined by its relative position with respect to its competitors. As industry is dominated by few large players and their action, actions lead to determining the CSF for the industry, which smaller players have to follow for success. Let's take an example. In the case of pathological laboratory centers, earlier the critical success factor was authentic, hygienic, and scientific testing facilities until few big players added service features like door-to-door -door sample cell collection or home delivery of reports. Very soon, approachability and ease become the additional critical success factor for the players. Within internal environment analysis perspective, one also need to understand the concept of value chain framework, particularly in the production houses where the goods are to be manufactured, considering different value additions in the process of production. The value chain framework talk about any business is seen as a number of linked activities, particularly each producing value for the customer. By creating additional value, the organization may charge more or is able to deliver same value at a lower cost, either of this leading to a higher profit margin. This ultimately adds to the organization's final performance. When 
we look at the Porter's value chain framework, then it analyzes the organization's contributions of individual activities that is divided into primary and supportive both in a business and how they add up to the overall level of customer value the organization produces. So from this visual, you can easily pinpoint five major primary activities, namely inbound logistics, operations, outbound logistics, marketing and sales, and services. At the same time, there are majorly four supportive activities too, which is firm infrastructure, human resource management, procurement, and technological development. The moment we club together these activities as an individual acti activities, then collectively the profits of the organizations are somewhere addressed. Now we need to understand these primary activities from the point of view guiding points for evaluating primary activities in the value chain framework. The first one is inbound logistics. It's important from the point that the soundness of material and inventory control system. At the same time, the efficiency of raw material warehousing activities also are the guiding points. When we see the other activity of operations, then the productivity of equipments compared to that of key competitors also plays a crucial role. The appropriate automation of production processes are considered very key from the perspective of those sectors where the manufacturing is taken, taking place based on the automation of the processes. The effectiveness of control system to improve quality and reduce cost and at the same time the efficiency of plant layout and workflow design are again considered as the important guiding points from the point of view of the operations as the primary activities. When we refer the third important activity that is outbound logistics, then the timeliness and efficiency of delivery of finished goods and services plays a crucial position for the firm while the efficiency of finished goods warehousing activities also considered the important one. The fourth type of activity in terms of guiding points is the marketing and sales where the effectiveness of market research for the point of view identifying customer segments and needs are considered as primary things because without market research and identifying the customer segments and the needs, the niche strategy might not be defined and function. At the same time, in the case of marketing and sales, the innovation in sales promotion and advertising, at the same time, the evolution of multiple alternate distribution channels also need to be considered while referring to the specific guiding points for evaluating the primary activities in value chain framework. The motivation and competence of sales force, development of an image of quality and a favorable reputation and extent of market dominance within the market segment or rural market also plays guiding points for evaluating the primary activities. The last activity from the primary activities point of view is customer services, which is again considered as a cycle where the customer give the feedback and based on that, the services are improved. From that point of view, as a guiding point, it means that to solicit customer input for product improvements, promptness of attention to customer complaints. So these aspects are addressed in the 
primary activity is particularly the customer services, which can also include appropriateness of warranty and guarantee policies that the firm gives to the customer and to provide replacement parts and repair services. Apart from that, the moment we also refer the SWOT analysis from the internal environment analysis point of view, then it has four dimensions to understand because the SWOT analysis summarizes the key issues from the external environment and the internal capabilities of an organization, those which become critical for strategy development. If you look at the visual, then you will notice that strength and weaknesses, which are internal factors for an organization. And at the same time, the opportunities and threats are the external factors for the firm. But the moment the strength are correlated with opportunities, then a significant strategy can be formed. Here, the strength and opportunities, a mix of internal and external factors are helpful to the firm. At the same time, the weakness and threats, which is internal as well as external factors are considered somewhere harmful because they are somewhere the weaknesses as well as the market threats where the strength perspective, the firm try to ask, what do we do best? And if we refer the weaknesses point of view, then the firm need to ask in what areas do we receive the most complaints, which can be addressed the moment the opportunities need to be questioned. Then from that perspective as an external factor, the question arises what opportunities are available to the firm. If we look at the threats component as an external factor, then question arises what threats, conditions or competitors pose a threat to the firm. We need to pinpoint these four aspects if we refer the SWOT analysis. For that, some example is being quoted here of the software development firm where the strength, weaknesses, opportunities and threats have been identified where for an example, six major strength has been identified for a specific software firm. One is high quality products. Second, good reputation of the firm. Third, learning from mistakes and producing better products. Fourth, highly competitive edge of the firm. Fifth, competitive pricing offering. And sixth, low production cost. So if we refer the weaknesses component, then again, six, in fact, five such weaknesses have been identified considering the SWOT analysis. One is the into loss making. Second, sales slowing down. Third, no sense of direction. Fourth, decreasing productivity. Fifth, no proper collaboration within the functional departments. These are the weaknesses identified in an internal environment analysis point of view. Similarly, when external factors considering the opportunities and threats are analyzed, then around seven to eight such opportunities and five to six such external factor threats have been analyzed or noted down. So in the case of opportunities, first is increase in the size of engineering division. Second is original work. Third, increase in promotional techniques. Fourth, trying to sell high quality products cheaper. The next opportunity is may expand its operations. Next opportunity is increase in demand of products like that. So similarly, if we refer some of the common threads, the firm is facing or have been able to analyze then in that case, the competitors like the other firms, other corporations, software industries or software firms are posing could be a major threat. The other threat could be reports 
show that some of its products are fake, decline in reputation. The third type of threat could be lacks proper strategy. So if we analyze and identify each of these aspects from the strength, weaknesses, opportunities and threat point of view, then we can also frame a kind of TOS analysis, which is an extension to the SORT analysis in which the strategy can be formed by making a arrangement where a specific strategy can be clubbed together with the specific weakness and a specific strategy can be formed. At the same time, the other type of strategy could be formed by addressing a specific strength with a specific opportunity. And similarly, the other type of strategy can also, also be formed in the TOS analysis by referring to a specific strength with a specific threat. Similarly, it's a kind of matrix which can emerge while referring to these four major components. Now, we also need to understand the last important matrix in the internal business environment analysis point of view, which is <coughs> internal vector evolution, that is IFE matrix, which is a strategic tool used to evaluate the internal environment of the organizations, which evaluates the major strength and weaknesses of the organization in the functional areas of a business. This matrix usually having four major steps. So we need to understand each of these steps. So in step number one, the key internal factors are identified and listed. Particularly around 10 to 20 such internal factors are identified, which determines both the strength and the weaknesses of the organization. <clears throat> the second step is to assign weight to each factor, which can be between a range of zero to one, where zero is not so important and one is very important. So these weights depict the relative importance to each factor for being successful in the industry. The weights are industry based and the sum of all weight should be equal to one. In the case of third step, we assign a rating to each factor and that rating is somewhere between one to four, where one signifies major weakness as that factor. Number two, rating two means minor weakness. Rating three signifies minor strength and rating four signifies major strength of that factor. In step number four, we need to determine a weighted score, which is calculated by multiplying the weight of each factor to its rating. And the last step is to, to, to determine the total weighted score, that is the sum of the step number four. As an example, you can see that the initially strength and weaknesses have been referred by identifying key internal factors where the strength are somewhere six, uh, six to seven internal factors have been identified and same is the case with weaknesses, like which include level of debts, price competitiveness, culture and impact of internal environment, external environment in the case of weaknesses. In step number two, the weight has been assigned between zero to one to each factor. And in step number three, rating has been assigned between a range of one to four. In step number four, weighted score has been calculated, which is a multiple or multiplication of weight to the rating. Based on that, the last step is to compute the sum of the total weighted score. The interesting aspect of the analysis is that total weighted score can be as low as one and it can be as high as four. 
and at the same time the average score should be somewhere 2.5 if we refer the significant aspect from decision perspective then total weighted score below 2.5 indicate a weak internal position of the firm on the other side if the total weighted score is above 2.5 then it signifies a better that is a strong internal position of the firm in this example the weighted score of strength if collectively considered it is somewhere around 1.92 whereas the total weighted score of the weaknesses if collectively seen then it is 0.82 and if we refer the total weighted score of both strength and weaknesses factors then it is somewhere around 2.75 2.74 which is a strong internal position of the firm so uh, this was uh, unit 6 we have discussed of block 2 now we need to refer the block number 3 which is formulation of strategy where three major units are there unit 7 is about business level strategy that we will be covering today here in this unit the popularly known uh, business level strategy is also referred as the generic strategies which include concept of cost and its role in business growth maybe from the perspective of three specific type of business level strategy will be discussed there that is cost leadership strategy differentiation strategy and the focus strategy the unit number 8 will discuss about the competitive strategy which will refer the formulation of competitive strategy in addition to the different situations enabling an understanding on different competitive moves taken by the organization to make its strategy effective and the different dimensions of competitive strategy this last unit number 9 of this block is corporate level strategy very commonly considered as, as the top level strategy of the organization it will deals with the concept of strategy at corporate level and also explains different types of growth strategies the major stress in this unit is on different types of expansion strategies and the rational for implementing these strategies so let's begin the unit number 7 that is business level strategy where the point of discussion in today's session would be on the concept of business level strategies three strategies in business level strategies will be referred Up after that we will also refer the role of cost in business growth concept of cost leadership strategy prerequisites of cost leadership and interrelationship of three generic strategies that is cost leadership differentiation and the focus will be referred cost leadership strategy limitation will also be covered here concept of differentiation strategy and its types will be discussed today factors resulting in differentiation strategy tangible and intangible components of differentiation cost of differentiation advantages and disadvantages of differentiation strategy will also be part of the discussion today and concept of focus strategy maybe in terms of the effectiveness of focus strategy in certain situation and its merits and demerits of the focus strategy will be discussed today so to begin with unit 7 we need to understand the business level strategy first the concept so when we refer the business level strategy sometimes we also refer them as a strategic business units strategy 2 which is a kind of layout or plan in advance or road map that helps a business to provide value to the customers and gain a competitive advantage by making the best use of its core competencies it try to address three core issues 
number one, satisfying the customer needs, which is the prime objective of the firm as well. The second is achieving an edge over its competitors. That is from the perspective of the differentiation. Third issue to be addressed with the business level strategies is to avoidance of competitive disadvantage. For that, three aspects are to be considered and discussed here. That is cost leadership, differentiation, and the focus strategy. <clears throat> so let's have a discussion on three important strategies, which are part of the business level strategies. The first is cost leadership strategy, which focuses on make a stress on producing quality products at low cost for the customers who are price sensitive at the same time maintaining the good level of quality. The second type of strategy under business level strategy is the differentiation strategy where the objective is producing goods and services considered unique in its industry and segment and directed at consumers who are relatively price insensitive. The third type of strategy as a part of business level strategy would be discussed about the focus strategy, which concentrates on producing products and services that fulfill the needs of small groups of consumers and is based on segmentation. Now, we need to understand the concept or the relevance of cost in terms of the business growth. The survival and the growth of any business organization depend categorically on what the organization pays for its fixed costs and what contribution it generates after meeting all such expenses. At the same time, apportioning of the fixed cost incurred by the organization in starting a business depends on the volume of its operations. So we can also try to understand that the cost is one such major aspect that the firms or the managers in that form try to streamline in such a manner that it can be minimized. At the same time, the two other aspects can also be you know, addressed at the same time while reducing or minimizing the cost. That is the higher level of efficiency, that is optimum utilization and higher level of quality or meeting out the standard or the benchmark set by the firm. At the same time, if we refer a lower volume of products, that puts a heavy burden on each unit produced. At the same time, a larger volume is being produced of operations that reduces the cost per unit. If we refer the total variable cost, which varies with the volume produced, that may also reduce as a consequence of the experience curve effect, which we can visualize from this visual, which, which according to which the cost per unit is high if the cumulative number of units produced are low. But at the same time, the cost per unit is low if the cumulative number of units produced are high, that is at 4x, the C4 is low, which reduces somewhere around 40% cost reduction every time cumulative production doubles. If we refer the cost leadership strategy, then it is to develop competitive advantage. The organization should produce good quality products at minimum cost. At the same time, the organizations should provide high quality at low cost so that the customer gets the best value for the products he is buying. Once a generic strategy is overall cost leadership, which aims at producing and delivering the product or service at a low cost relative to its competitors, at the same time, maintaining the high quality. If we refer the Porter's view, 
in terms of some of the prerequisites requirement for the cost leadership, then around five such prerequisites of cost leadership has been defined. First is aggressive construction of efficient scale facilities. Second, vigorous pursuit of cost reduction from experience, that is the experience of the firm. Third, tight cost and overhead control, again, to be taken care by the firm through its own expertise and the cost control mechanism. The fourth prerequisite of cost leadership is avoidance of marginal customer accounts. Last, cost minimization. And this is addressed for the purpose of to sustain the cost leadership throughout the organization. And it must be clear here that its accomplishment through different elements of the value chain will meet out in terms of helping the objective. If we refer three these three generic strategies, that is the cost leadership, differentiation, and focus, then we need to understand the interrelationship of all these three, which is shown here through this visual, here, where at the top you can see competitive advantage where the question arises what makes the company strong where two major factors are the cost related factor and differentiation related factor at the same time at the left side you can find the market scope where the question arises to be addresses what part of the market is being targeted sometimes we call it as a kind of segment where it is further divided into a specific segment or the entire market. If we refer this matrix from the point of view, competitive advantage over the market scope, then the first strategy from the cost leadership is that be the most competitive company in cost in the entire market. But at the same time, if we refer the competitive advantage and the market scope from the point of view of the differentiation, then the differentiation strategy need to be a distinctive company recognized for its uniqueness, quality, or personality. If we refer the focus strategy from the point of view of co the competitive advantage and the market scope, then the strategy could be be very competitive in cost in a particular product or niche that is the focus a cost focus based uh, strategy but if at the same time we refer the focus towards the differentiation then the strategy could be somewhere uh, to have a differentiated product or market niche now we need to understand some of the limitational aspect of the cost leadership strategy that this strategy that cost leadership also have some drawback as compared to the advantages or the its core objective. So the limitational aspects are that it initiation by the competitive organizations, the threat of competitive organizations from other nations, organization losing cost leadership due to fast technological changes, which require high high capital investment. The another limitation is threat by competitors to capture the still lower cost segments. And last limitation could be competition based on other than cost factor. So if we conclude the discussion on the cost leadership strategy, both the the significant features of this strategy if we apply and the limitational aspect which are considered then cost leadership strategy has to be adopted keeping in mind the risk involved and uh, developing an overall effective cost strategy if we refer the another significant uh, aspect of uh, differentiation that is differentiation strategy then Within the uh, specific automobile sector, 
or a specific within that a specific segment if we refer then as an example as an example of a safety measure or the braking system the differentiation could be uh, a case is there that is of g uh, where the regular model is there which is referring to radar brake system which is a collision mitigation system uses the reflection from a, a millimeter wave radar sensor on the front of the vehicle to realize advanced safety functions it assists increases brake pressures if it senses the driver is not braking hard enough and ultimately it helps in reducing the possibility of any accident so it could be good example of differentiation uh, before we move in terms of moving ahead in terms of understanding the differentiation strategy so we can now better understand the concept of differentiation strategy it is used to satisfy the diverse needs of the customers it becomes essential for the organizations to adopt a differentiation strategy apart from that to make this strategy successful it is necessary for the organizations to do extensive research to study the different needs of the customers an organization is able to differentiate from its competitors if it is able to position itself uniquely at something that is valuable to the buyers apart from that differentiation can lead to differential advantage in which the organization gets the premium in the market which is more than the cost of providing differentiation if we further understand the concept of differentiation strategy then differentiation can be said to have more competitive advantage than the cost advantage as it is quite difficult to imitate the differentiated products apart from that even if the initiation is done in terms of concept then also a particular product remains unique regarding its value style packaging etc therefore it is important to understand the demand of the customers and subsequently fulfilling this demand keeping in mind the differentiation advantage in this case one thing the organization should concentrate on is creativity and the innovativeness aspect then on market research when we refer the some of the important factors which resulting in the differentiation strategy then around four such major factors are there one to compete against the rivals to create entry barriers for newcomers by building a unique product number 3 to reduce the threats arising from the substitutes number 4 to develop a differentiation advantage here these factors maybe there are number of reasons which which somewhere define or try to identify the differentiation strategy in this case the requirement is need based and it ultimately depends on the organization's position in the market therefore differentiation ultimately helps the organization to get a competitive advantage over its rival organizations maybe it is if we we consider the case of it sector then the competitive advantage of nature of softwares or maybe the kind of environment of say fulfilling those orders maybe the kind of differentiation strategy the firm may apply to if we refer two types of uh, differentiation strategy then they are categorized under tangible differentiation strategy and intangible differentiation strategy tangible differentiation strategy as the no as the name defines is something that you can see you can feel maybe it can include the component called size shape color weight 
design, material, technology, something like that. So it is concerned, which is highly observable, characteristic in nature of a product or service that are relevant to customer's preference and choice processes. At the same time, the tangible differentiation also include the performance of the product or service in terms of the reliability, consistency, taste, speed, durability, and safety. If we refer the intangible differentiation, then it is a sort of aura of the product, which one can feel but can't see. If we refer the kind of opportunities for intangible differentiation, which arises because the value that customer perceive in a product or service does not depend exclusively on the tangible aspects of the offering. Whereas when we refer some of the key components of differentiation from the point of view of the tangible and intangible component, then the tangible components may include design, packaging, style, or say quality. But the intangible components which one can feel is in terms of the image, brand, company reputation, and customer preferences. Here, the intangible differentiation is more effective in those cases where the customer has once experienced the product. For example, the case of chocolates. Every brand has a unique taste, different packaging style, and uh, this is the case where quality can be judged only after using the product that is chocolate once, but in case where the quality cannot be judged by experience, then we can take an example of medical services. The intangible differentiation is not that effective in such case. Therefore, it can be said that intangible differentiation is accompanied by tangible differentiation. There are some set of activities which have been identified by Sadler in 2004, which are considered as the key opportunities for creating uniqueness within the organization. As an example, we can refer in case of delivery, the opportunity or differentiation opportunity could be speed in fulfilling customer orders and reliability in meeting promised delivery items. The other aspect of activity could be marketing, where the differentiation opportunity could be building of product and company reputation through advertising. Another example we can take from the activity called design, and within that differentiation opportunity could be aesthetic appeal, robustness of performance, and ease of maintenance, like that. If we refer the cost of differentiation applicable to the firm, then it's a costly affair. It adds cost and it involves added features to the, to the respective product or service, which cater to the needs of the customers. Usually, the cost is incurred in the following cases. Number one, increased expenditure on training very commonly we see that the human resources hired by Amazon, Zometro delivery partner, the training is required to be emphasized to the higher level. The other type of cost incurred is in terms of increased advertising spending to promote the product. So if we take the example of toothpaste, you will notice that the advertisement cost or spending on different brands is very high, like the Colgate, Patanjali, Dabur Red, maybe many more. If we refer the third cost related aspect, it is cost of hiring highly skilled sales force. For example, in the automobile sector, the dealers of reputed brands or reputed firms need to hire a highly professional like the BTEC in the respective field. The other cost related aspect could be use of more expensive material 
to improve the quality of the product. That is, some example could be smartphone like iPhone, Samsung. The cost of differentiation here is surely very costly, but if the value activities are coordinated properly, the cost can be minimized. Differentiation in having more product features can be more costly. Here, the cost of differentiation more or less depend on cost drivers, though it is very difficult to develop a trade-off between differentiation and cost efficiency, but not impossible to for a firm, though application of modern technology increases the scope of cost, but on the other hand, the labor cost is reduced to a large extent and technical efficiency achieved is very high. Therefore, the last, the economies of scale can be exploited to a large extent with the help of trade-offs between cost and differentiation. Now, if we refer the advantages and the limitation aspect of the differentiation strategy, then some of the advantage of the differentiation strategy is that the premium price for the organization can be a very lucrative aspect because the organization can differentiate from its rival organization and that lead to charging of premium price. The second advantage could be increase in number of units sold. We can realize it if the product is unique, then the demand for it increases, which ultimately increases the number of units sold. The third advantage is increase in brand loyalty by the customer. Means the customer continue to pursue such brands in future too, if the brand loyalty for the customer is very high. The fourth advantage is sustaining competitive advantage. That is a combination of the three advantage. It's a combination of that and it, it build a, a kind of supportive environment for the firm. Here, if we refer the advantages, we also need to analyze the disadvantages of this differentiation strategy. The first is uniqueness of the product not valued by buyers. There are a number of cases which has been seen in the market where the differentiated product has not gained importance by the customers, hence failed to position itself in the market. The other disadvantage could be excess amount of differentiation. That is noticed that if the organization is unable to understand the customer needs and preferences, but goes on differentiating the product very commonly, then the organization loses its market value and unnecessary differentiation results in failure too. The third disadvantage of differentiation strategy is loss due to differentiation. Again, in certain cases, it has been observed that the organization while differentiating does not realize the importance of coordinated activities in the value chain, which results in high cost. And this result in loss of the, or loss to the organization. The last component of the business strategy is towards the focus strategy or sometimes called as the niche strategy. Here, the focus strategy is segment based and has narrow competitive scope. This strategy involves the selection of the market segment or a group of segments in the industry and meeting the needs of that preferred segment. Very commonly two variants has been noticed in this niche strategy. One is cost focus, which is where an organization seeks a cost advantage in the target segment. And another is differentiation focus, where an organization seeks differentiation in the target market. If we refer subsequently, then Thompson and uh, Strickland has defined niche as geographic uniqueness by specialized requirements in using the product or by special product attributes that appeal only to niche member. Here we can say that the success of the focus strategy 
or the niche strategy depends on the difference of the target segment from other segment. These are some of the effectiveness of focus strategy in certain situation. One could be market segment, large enough to be profitable. Market segment has good growth potential. It is not significant to the success of major competitors. Focuser has efficient resources. Focuser is able to defend against challenges. High costs are difficult to the competitors to meet the specialized needs of the niche. Last but not the least, Focuser is able to choose from different segment. Some advantages if we refer of the focus strategy, then it can defend against Porter's competitive forces. It can reduce competition from new organization by creating a niche of its own. Threats from producers producing substitute products is also reduced. The bargaining power of the powerful customer is reduced Last advantage is focus strategy or the niche strategy, if combined with low cost and differentiation strategy, it would increase definitely the market share and the profitability. Here we also need to see the disadvantages of the focus strategy that the market segment may not be large enough to address or generate the profit. The second limitation aspect of niche strategy is that segments need may become less distinct from the main market. And the last is competition may take over the target segment. So here we have reached to the conclusion of today's session. So we will be talking the other type of strategies as a block three in subsequent session till that day, till that time, a goodbye to you all of you. Thank you.